Thank you, thank you very much for joining me on this recording in your audit class. I want to focus on auditing non-trading organization on this particular time and I uh, hope that um, you have got a paper and a pen you want to take down some notes. We will look at the nature of non-trading organizations and anticipate potential problem areas we shall appreciate audit risk associated with NGOs, non-trading organizations as well as reporting requirements. So we'd like to use the model of a charity to just discuss um, non-trading organizations. A charity is a common form of a non-trading non organization and uh, a charity is an institution established for charitable purposes and subject to the control of the law as such. And of course areas of concern under a charity may include relief of poverty, advancement of religion, advancement of education, and community service. Essentially, charities are there to provide a service, not to make profits. But they can also carry out, they can still carry out what is known as uh, trading activities in order to meet their mandate of providing that service. So when you consider uh, financial statements of a non-trading organization, not-for-profit making organization, or not-for-profit organization, you have the statement of financial activities. Uh, in some cases, a summary income, a summary rather, of income and expenditure account. Uh, a statement of financial position showing the assets, liabilities and funds of the charity and the statement of cash flows uh, where required. And of course, we have got what we call the notes. What are some of the other not-for-profit making organizations that you may know? So we have got the government, taxpayer-funded organizations, including government hospitals, schools, public service institutions, local councils, clubs and associations. Uh, some of these clubs, of course, may be partly funded by the government and we've got what we call friendly societies. So what are some of the problem areas that we anticipate in uh, non-trading organizations. Number one, donations. Donations may not be supported by invoice or equivalent documentations. Donations may not be supported by source documents. And so this may, you know, send a signal that uh, the books of a charity or an NGO or a non-trading organization may not be rely relied upon. Legacies when it comes to income recognition, you know, some individuals uh, have got a will, they have in their will uh, an intention to bequeath or to transfer their wealth to a charity when they are gone. Uh, the question there is when does a charity recognize such kind of income? Definitely there must be rules, including the fact that uh, such income should be supported by a valid will, as well as, uh, you know, um, evidence, probability rather, high probability that the money or the resources will be received. Government funding or grants? Well, government does not give grants without conditions. Grants will be given with conditions. So if those conditions, if those grants are to be recognized rather, then the conditions should have been satisfied. Now it might be found that in some cases conditions are not being satisfied and the government may stand to recall the grant. That could mean that uh, the income of the charity or NGO or non-trading organization, non-commercial organization has been overstated. 
restricted funds well it's very important for us to know um, that uh, this could apply to the issue of uh, not having adequate resources um, and uh, it's very important that uh, when benefactors you know advance resources to a charity there must be what is known as accountability in terms of spending so all those tools that you use to control spending including the budget and the proper allocation administration of resources should be in place I want us to progress grants to beneficiaries these must be bona fide and uh, uh, of course uh, documentation must be in place to prove this then there's what we call branches all right branches charities uh, normally you know uh, disperse resources to let's say branches in accordance with what is known as the statement of recommended practice so all resources that might be channeled to the branches all resources that could be channeled to other you know institution in order to meet the same needs must be subject to what is known as a statement of recommended practice now like in every audit you need to plan for your audit auditors should consider uh, the scope of the audit that is what the audit will encompass for a non-trading organization you need to get acquainted with recommendations of regulators and the regulations that are binding on a particular you know charity must be appreciated there must be accounting policies that you know help the institution the non-trading organization to account for its uh, for the way that it's it utilizes its resources um, and of course we need internal controls there that help us to safeguard the resources of you know benefactors there must be also an appreciation of any changes in the sector uh, in which the NFPO might be operating and uh, that may not be appreciated by your auditees so you need to help them there all right so changes must be known because uh, uh, you don't want to be caught off guard all right let us progress to the next part we need also to consider past experience of the system and a you know uh, unique experiences that you had in your last audit can still be applied to the current audit you have got uh, also other issues to consider under key audit areas. Uh, you want to make sure that those areas uh, you know given enough attention, or you assign uh, you know experienced members uh, of uh, the audit team. All right. Then you must also give details or get details and financial statements on which you're going to base your audit report uh, take a look at uh, also consider the risk of the you know um, the risk that is th that the work rather is posing to you from the side of auditing remember this is what we call audit risk okay so audit risk is a function of inherent risk uh, we've got what we call control risk as well as detection risk under inherent risk uh, we need to consider the complexity extent of regulation the significance of donations and cash receipts lack of predictable income restricted funds restrictions imposed by governing documents or the government we have got tax rules sensitivity of key statistics balance of maintaining resources building up funds and so on and so forth so inherent risk is something that we cannot control as auditors but we can of course work on our detection risk to minimize the overall audit risk under control risk we have got f factors such as time commitment and degree of involvement of the trustees in the affairs of the non-trading organization 
skills of trustees, independence of trustees from each other, and of course what we call division of duties. Uh, there should be no one trustee who is responsible, who has got what we call um, uh, and uncontrollable powers or unlimited powers. Um, it should be uh, said here that uh, all the trustees uh, must have a fair share in terms of uh, the trajectory and input that is needed to, to drive the agenda of the, you know, non-trading organization. Control environment, you need to consider segregation of duties. It's a very key area in small, not for profit making organization. Uh, where there's no segregation of duties, of course, we expect abuse of resources, privileges, and so on and so forth. Okay, internal control deficiency is also another concern here. So look out for lack of segregation of duties, use of unqualified staff. It could be possible that uh, when the institution is small, then the quality of staff may not be as good. Okay? And then there must be controls over cash as well as donations. Numerical control over boxes and tin boxes must be implemented, including, you know, surprise cash counts. There must be satisfactory sealing of boxes so that any opening prior to recording cash is apparent. Okay? That is, it should be witnessed as well. Regular collecting and recording of proceeds must be prioritized. Check that that is prioritized. Then we need also to check for dual control of accounting and recording of proceeds. The four eyes principle must be adapted and applied in these institutions as well. There must be also, <laughs> next point is saying, an open mail must be kept securely. The security, the safeguarding of an open mail must be prioritized. Uh, dual control over the opening of mail, that one has been uh, also addressed there. When mail is to be open, especially mail that contains, you know, valuable resources, there should be, you know, witnesses, at least two witnesses. Immediate recording of donations on opening of mail or receipt is also supposed to be encouraged. Uh, prompt recording of receipts may minimize the risk of fraud. Agreement of bank paying in slips to records of receipts by an independent person should be carried out on a regular basis. Okay, so under audit evidence, we need to consider the following. Um, consider, under, the, consider understatement or incompetence, incompleteness in income rather. Uh, there is potential that income, not all the grants, not all the income that could have come through uh, was recorded. And then also you need to look out for overstatement of grants or assets, uh, particularly when uh, the trustees would like to, you know, uh, let's say get a loan. They may want to overstate certain assets uh, just to, you know, uh, have access to resources. Uh, misanalysis or misuse of funds could be, you know, uh, talk of the day here. Why? Because you, 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 you have the problem of accountability in, this, in these institutions. Uh, it's very close to the government, and the government that is in a country where there's weak political will, uh, there will be wastage. Misstatement of assets like don donated uh, properties. Uh, again, when you don't pay for what you have, there's likely to, to, to be some, some level of uh, recklessness and, uh, and negligence. So we need to look out for that. There's, there's also existence of restricted funds in foreign branches. Uh, it should be noted here that uh, there must be uh, compliance with uh, provisions whenever these funds are to be accessed or used. Okay. Under overview, you need to consider if accounting policies were appropriate and they were applied consistently throughout the accounting period. You need to consider analytical procedures. Um, of course, you need to check whether numbers speak to each other. You know, grants received last year. 
must somewhat be within range to the grants received this year so look out for anomalies okay now let us deal with reporting and i think that this is the last part of our discussion the form of the auditor's report is dictated by the net the not-for-profit making organizations applicable legislation or indeed charity constitution and it should conform to isa 700 take some bit of time to read that the financial statement should have been prepared in accordance with any additional statutory requirements or specific guidance uh, that is applicable to the non-trading organization and that fact should be referred to in the auditor's report that uh, the financial statements conform to a specific criteria uh, where the non for uh, the not rather for profit making institution uh, is, is not government governed by statute the auditor's report will depend upon the scope of the assignments okay and and it should be mentioned here that uh, these institutions may not just want uh, a report for you know statutory purposes they may want a report just to satisfy the information requirements of donors so i wanted to thank you for listening next time when we meet we are likely to deal with uh, you know uh, we're likely to deal with um, reporting and i think reporting should be the last uh, the last discussion that we should have i thank you so very much let me know if you've got um, some questions thank you very much